Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a pen mail and pen review video for you today. Now, today's pen is the Caveco Sport Cognac Galen Leather Edition Fountain Pen. Now, I'm going to do the uh, unwrapping and everything because there are a few other bits and pieces in this package which I wasn't actually expecting. Um, I'll talk about the pen, the price what I ended up paying for this pen and why shortly but let's start off with looking at the pen so came today UPS delivery from Turkey from Galen Leather who are known quite widely in the fountain pen community for their um, rather nice leather notebooks leather um, leather products which are quite popular now they have gone into collaboration with Caveco who have if you like remanufactured the Caveco Sport Cognac fountain pen um, which was a very popular design color scheme from a few years ago uh, and created the Galen leather edition of the Cognac fountain pen so let's have a look oh okay just uh, bear with me a minute now, I am going to have to uh, pause this video a few times because we've got all sorts of stuff going on at the moment. But anyway, that's the pen. What else is in this? A whole load of bubble wrap. There we go. Right, so what is this? No idea. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Chuck that over there. What's this I'm guessing this is a lemon refreshing towel I guess Galen Leather went on a flight recently and um, decided to steal a few of these and chuck them in with people's orders no idea UK sellers like Colt pens and pure pens tend to give you a bag of Haribo sweets so interesting addition 10% uh, off Next order, the evil eye. What on earth? Yeah, I'll read that later. Our story, yeah, tells you about Galen Leather, husband and wife team. Ah, right, okay. This is the evil eye. So this, this, this is what this is about. Okay, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a charm basically. So I'll, I'll have a read of that later, and have a look. Ooh, yeah. There we go, the evil eye, protect you from uh, from evil. Interesting uh, addition there. Galen leather pouch, handmade. Drawstring pouch, don't have a clue what's inside this. Um, Earl Grey tea. And Istanbul Turkish coffee. Okay, so to go along with the uh, refreshing lemon towel wipe that they got on the plane, they obviously went to a hotel and um, got some of the freebies out of there as well. That, it's quite nice to get little free gifts in there, unusual. Um, I'm, I'm not knocking Galen Leather for this, by the way. I'm kind of just taking the pee. Um, so, yeah, nice little gifts, nice little um, drawstring bag. With, I, I do like Galen Leather and um, uh, company's logo. I do think it's quite good. It looks quite vintage. But, of course, this is the main event. So, Caveco Sport Cognac Galen Leather Edition comes in this cardboard sleeve, which unfortunately has got a bit bashed up in transit, but never mind. So let's have a look, see what it says. Yep, journaling and writing supplies. And Caveco Sport Cognac. As you can see, I've got the medium nibbed version. This pen is available in extra fine, fine, medium broad and double broad nib sizes. What have we got on this side? For good writing, that's their logo. Right, how do I get this thing out? There we go, it's quite tight. Okay, plain brown cardboard box. And there's the pen. So unlike some of the Caveco 
uh, like the All Sports, Caveco All Sport uh, fountain pens. Um, it doesn't come in a tin, it comes in this cardboard box, which is, you know, it's quite, quite nice. And here's the pen. So, this is the Galen Leather edition of the Caveco Sport in the cognac finish. Now, I really love this. It's, it's like a rich yellow amber um, coloured cognac version of the um, Caveco Ice Sport. This is the clear demonstrator version in this nice cognac colour. Um, and to be absolutely honest, these things go, the old original, get this back in focus, the old original um, cognac Caveco Sport fountain pens, hardly ever see them for sale on eBay. Whenever I have, which hasn't been very often, maybe twice in the last six months possibly, if that, um, sellers seem to be asking for £300 upwards. Um, maybe even an auction of a start with a starting price of three hundred pounds. So, yeah, very expensive for a Caveco Sport pen. Plastic Sport, you know, not uh, not talking anything um, outlandish as far as the materials go because it is just this nice. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they uh, make them out of actually. Possibly ABS, but. Don't know. Anyway, I, I mean, the Caveco Sport pens are robust. Very, very nice pens. And I love this colour. But there was no way in the world I was paying £300 for this one particular colour. You know, it's way beyond my price bracket. And especially for a fountain pen, which, you know, the Caveco Ice Sports, you know, the other colour versions... They're up to twenty pounds um, here in the UK, so I mean they're not hugely expensive pens. So when you start looking at that sort of price, just for this particular colour, no, sorry. So when I heard that Gale and Leather were doing this in 2020, this um, cognac version, especially for them, and as you can see, it's got Gale and Leather Co. on the uh, opposite side of the uh, cap to the Caveco Sport writing which is in gold it's all in gold um and these pens and i'm going to talk about the price in a minute 24 pounds which to be honest absolute bargain yeah definitely want a cognac caveco sport for 24 pounds i don't mind i'm quite happy the fact that it's a gale and leather edition as well i mean that adds something to it you never know a few years from now these things might be worth 300 pounds so that's the pen Unscrew cap, as with all Caveco Sports, you can see the cap liner quite visibly in there, and I've never noticed it being so opaque, um, which is, I don't know, kind of detracts from the pen. The uh, Caveco logo and everything is on the finial there in gold, pale gold. Thankfully a gold-coloured steel nib, medium steel nib in this case, and of course, with the Caveco Sport, that's a bit squeaky. What's that there? A bit of dust. Unscrews came with this blue cartridge. It takes these short standard international cartridges. You can get optional converters for the Caveco Sport, but they're horrible and fiddly and hold hardly any ink compared to even a short standard international cartridge. So. As far as I'm concerned, if I ever use my Caveco Sports, which I do on a daily basis, I've always got some version of a Caveco Sport fountain pen inked up, um, I'll tend to use cartridges, but more often than not, I fill the barrel with ink, apply some silicone grease around the threads on the section, and I dropper it. So I use these pens as... Very squeaky use these pens as eye droppers so they hold a lot of ink and they're very convenient and they're great little pocket pens now i already have reviewed various caveco fountain pens sport fountain pens on my uh, channel but i wanted to show you this as a pen mail video because this is only just out i um placed my order a couple of weeks ago and the pens were released 
maybe a week ago, I got full information. I got a text from Gail and Leather saying my order had been dispatched. Um, I got a confirmation email from UPS saying that they had my order and it was in transit. And yesterday, you know, two days ago, I got an email saying that, um, yeah, there will be a customs charge. Now, we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, at the end of this video. So that's worth sticking around and waiting to, uh, to hear my thoughts on that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be, well, I'm going to skip the flushing. I normally flush all of my fountain pens before I put an ink cartridge into them. But I just can't be bothered because I want to see what this pen writes with. And I've also got some ink cartridges to go with this pen, um, which I am eager to, uh, eager to try. I bought these separately months and months ago. I never got around to using them because I didn't really have a pen that I fancied just putting them into, but I'm hoping that these are going to be a good match. These are um, Caveco Sunrise Orange ink cartridges, so I've got a pack of those already. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pause this video and just make sure that the um, the ink is actually filling into the uh, the feed and the nib, Let's see how it writes, and then we'll uh, do a writing sample. So I shall be back in one moment. Right, so I have, and it, it took seconds if that to uh, to install this ink cartridge just pushed, pushed it into place and honestly within within five seconds a little bit of a shake and this pen's writing absolutely perfectly so we'll do the writing sample now I shall just retrieve my Rhodia notepad from my cult pens Ruta Tassin leather notebook which I really love I mean this 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 thing, I know I knocked it a little bit in my uh, review of it because there are a few minor, minor issues with it, but actually it's really, really useful. Um, I do like this Cult Pens Rutatassen leather notebook in uh, in Ranger Brown. Um, I find it just it's really handy for just chucking all my notebooks in, and yeah, it's great. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about that leather product on Gale and Leathers. Um, special moment for their fountain pen. Let's just get a bit of Rhodia paper sorted out here. Okay, so we've got a very orange theme, orange and brown theme going on today, which is quite nice. Should be filming this in the autumn. So anyway, I mean, it is your typical Caveco Sport. It's a short pocket fountain pen. Translucent, well, clear uh, demonstrator in this nice cognac colour. Nice amber, amber yellow, amber brown maybe. Push to post. Oh, unscrews. Now I'll just always like to mention this. So, how many turns to unscrew the cap? One turn, just over one turn. So, perfectly acceptable as far as I'm concerned. And it posts really nicely. Excellent length, very comfortable to write with. You can even write with it unposted, but it's a bit too short, really. So it is a penny post, and it just pushes on to post. It posts very deeply and very securely. These are excellent pocket fountain pens. Very good to write with for a long period. Um, nice gold-coloured steel nib. Section is, as per all your typical Caveco sports, sections i mean it's a round section it's a decent length there are some threads here but it's smooth they don't really interfere with your fingers at all i mean you could hold the pen really really quite high up if you wanted so great from that point of view so let's do the writing sample So here we go, Greco Sport, Galen, oh sorry, 
Greco Sport Cognac Gale and Leather Edition with a medium steel nib. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this so you can see. Whoa, now this writes. <laughs> there we go. So, the quick brown fox. So, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is a medium steel nib, and I usually, not always, I did do a video a while ago about Quebeco um, on their Frosted Sport fountain pens, where some of their um, nibs were a little, and nibs and feeds were a bit poor, so I got those replaced, free of charge from Quebeco, which was, you know, kudos to them. But this nib... Absolutely excellent. Straight out of the box, it's writing. It's, I mean, it, it, it's excellent. It's smooth. It's fantastic. This is how fountain pens should be when you get them straight out of the box. And it lays down plenty of ink. Let's just do the little smear test here. So, I mean, it's medium um, wetness, which is absolutely fine. Medium nib. Uh, I don't know a lot about this um, ink because this is the first time I've actually used it, but it's, it's, in my view, it seems pretty good. So the ink, I shall just write this down for you. Caveco Sunrise Orange, which is a nice orange coloured ink. Yeah. I quite like it. It's, it's a, a more muted, darker orange, without being too dark, um, than I like. But it's, unlike so many orange uh, fountain pen inks, it's actually legible. Um, there's not that many where they get the colour right. It's either a bit m bit of a muddy orange, a bit too brown, a bit too dark, or else it's just... It might be a nice bright orange, but on white paper it's just lost. Whereas this... I think is quite honestly doing a very, very good job. And I could use this as an everyday writing ink. And I also feel that it really matches this cognac colour as well. Really, really well. Um, something else I was going to talk about here. Oh, reverse writing, of course. Let's see what that's like. No. Now, sometimes, and it is nib dependent because these nibs are never identical, but no, there is no reverse writing whatsoever so no this particular pen this nib is not going to do any reverse writing very nice i quite like this gold nib and the nibs are interchange interchangeable i mean they just simply slide out friction fit so you can swap the nibs around if you want with the um, the other sizes so there we go mini Fountain pen review, pen mail video, unboxing, whatever you want to call it. Just leave that there while I talk about the price. Now, you go on Gale and Leather's website, bearing in mind I'm based in the UK. And this pen, Caveco Sport Cognac, Gale and Leather Edition, costs 24 pounds. Fair enough, a few pounds more, maybe five pounds more than you would pay for a Caveco Ice Sport. So you've got a special edition if you like. Cognac, much coveted fountain pen, uh, much coveted Caveco Sport fountain pen colour, for 25 pounds, basically, 24 pounds. That's what it costs. Which, to be honest, in my view, is absolutely excellent. However, and this is what is something that you must be aware of and every country is going to be different but bear in mind there are shipping costs to include now i did a video ages ago late last year um about you know the perils of buying from overseas companies overseas sellers retailers um and the charges that you can get shipping charges customs charges things like that 
and this is what really does great with me on this particular purchase and I do love it I, I must admit this is going to be an everyday writer for me I'm certainly going to have this in my fountain pen rotation for a good few months probably because I, I've always got one of the Caveco sport pens but they're just great so this is not something I regret however I'll talk about the shipping costs so You've paid £24 for the actual fountain pen. Fair enough. Yeah, no issues with that. And I don't mind paying a bit of extra for the shipping. Shipping cost £8. Which, in my view, you know, from Turkey, yeah, it's acceptable. It's what I, what I would expect to pay if I bought a fountain pen from eBay, say, over on the continent. Yeah, £8. UPS then applies a, and this is only in the UK to my particular address, UPS applied £17.47 to the overall cost. So I couldn't get this pen until I paid their costs. So UPS basically charged me, it's not even an invoice um, for customs duty, customs charges. It just seems to be their handling fee which is a bit annoying because i mean you're paying eight pounds for shipping and then 17 pounds 47 on top of that so i mean your total price just to get this pen here is 25 pounds 47 that is more than the cost of the fountain pen which to be honest is you know that's it's not cool it's not great um and I have seen on the Facebook uh, pages, the Fountain Pen Facebook pages, people have gone ahead and ordered a wonderful leather notebook cover for £40 or something from Gale and Leather, and it's arrived in the UK or even in America. And they've basically been charged the same price for the product just to get the thing to their home address or whatever address they've chosen, which, in my view, is... It, it, it's got, it, I mean, it certainly would put me off. I had a feeling that this was going to happen, but I thought, you never know, £24, it should be well under any customs um, customs fees. But, of course, it's this lottery. You never know where you, whether you're going to be charged it or you're not. But it seems that anything from Turkey is more likely to uh, attract some sort of charges. But or is it just UPS? I don't know. Either way. £24 for the fountain pen, very, very happy with that. £25.47 for the get, for the actual getting it here. Which, yeah. that is something that you will have to bear in mind. If you really want one of these pens, I mean, you're paying nearly £50 for it. Which, in my view, I'm still happy to pay that. But it's it's a bit of... Draw your own conclusions. I know some people aren't going to complain at all, and there's many fountain pen um, users and enthusiasts here in the UK who don't mind paying, you know, customs charges to get things sent over from, say, for example, the USA, like, I don't know, Goulet Pens, Pen Chalet, wherever they are, because there are one or two North American exclusive fountain pens that you'll never get in the UK, and you might think, I, I don't mind pay paying £50 shipping, and customs charges to get the pen here because it's a pen that I really want and this is a pen that I really wanted and I am very happy to have it but do, just please do bear in mind those additional fees which um, which will mount up or certainly come out of the blue if you're not aware of those so I hope you found this this uh, video was interesting give me a like if you enjoyed it and uh, thanks very much for watching and I shall see you next time bye <laughs>